The internet is something that I refer to as the digital wild west, the last frontier of our generation. The rise of the digital age has created infinite space for people to explore the mass information and misinformation present in the world. Anybody with access to the internet effectively has information on anything they can imagine. In this environment, people are responsible for generating their own opinions and should take pride in making themselves informed members of the public. This is the essential atmosphere of a free society, to be able to illuminate everything and fact check for ourselves in real time. Bad ideas and misinformation should be out in the public for people to evaluate for themselves. Anonymity and pseudonymity both play important roles in this free society. There is an old saying that it's only when people think that no one is listening that they will tell you what they really think. This is one of the reasons why the internet is the platform that it is. It is uniquely qualified to spread ideas. You can spend literal hours just browsing any website, limited only to your imagination. However, the time of digital liberty could soon be coming to an end because... my Russian bots, of course. In a draft called the Potential Policy Proposals for the Regulation of Social Media and Tech Firms, written up by Senator Mark Warner, Warner claims that Today's tools seem almost built for Russian disinformation techniques, and the ones to come will be even worse. So, Senator, you mean to tell me that the Russians actually built the internet the way it is, planning years ahead to put Trump into office? I joke, but there are hints of that suggested in the paper. Warner is suggesting several things to prevent Russia from hacking the election again, despite the public still not being familiar with just how this supposedly happened. Keep in mind, their story has changed day to day. They are so obviously full of it. In the draft, Senator Warner suggests the following. Mandatory location verification. The paper suggests forcing social media platforms to authenticate and disclose the geographic origin of all user accounts or posts. Now considering the political climate we're currently sitting in, my imagination can fill in the blanks on how this rule could be used in a bad manner. Mandatory identity verification. The paper suggests forcing social media and tech platforms to authenticate user identities and only allow authentic accounts, in parentheses, inauthentic accounts, not only pose threats to our democratic process, but also undermine the integrity of digital markets. With failure to appropriately address inauthentic account activity punishable as a violation of both SEC Disclosure Rules and or Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. Bot Labeling. Warner's paper suggests forcing companies to somehow label bots or be penalized. No word from Warner on how this will be remotely feasible. Define popular tech as essential facilities. These would be subject to all sorts of heightened rules and controls, says the paper, offering Google Maps as an example of the kinds of apps or platforms that might count. The law would not mandate that a dominant provider offer the service for free, writes Warner. Rather, it would be required to offer it at a reasonable and non-discriminatory term provided by the government. Other proposals include more disclosure requirements for online political speech, more spending to cover supposed cybersecurity threats, more funding for the Federal Trade Commission, a requirement that companies' algorithms can be audited by the feds, and the data can also be shared with universities and others, and a requirement of interoperability between dominant platforms. The paper also suggests making it a rule that tech platforms above a certain size must turn over internal data and processes to, quote, independent public interest researchers. <laughs> that sounds like a euphemism if I've ever heard one. So they can identify political, public health addiction effects, anti-competitive behavior, radicalization, scams, user-propagated misinformation, and harassment. Data that could be used to inform actions by regulators or Congress. And these include further revisions to Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. A revision to Section 230 could provide the ability for users to demand takedowns of certain sorts of content and hold platforms liable if they don't abide. Of course, it says this while admitting that Attempting to distinguish between true disinformation and legitimate satire could prove difficult. All or even any of these changes proposed would ruin the things that make the internet the important platform that it is. People like Senator Warner have no concept of this, instead looking to wrap the internet in bubble wrap so that him and his associates can chase the political power they crave so much with minimal backlash. 
Make no mistake, this isn't about preventing a handful of Facebook ads that amounted to nothing, a laughable attempt at sowing discord. Instead, the press itself has sowed the discord they kept telling us was Russia's doing. They will insist that this is about democracy, but it is anything but. They want the internet changed because in its current state, information that is bad for them is spread worldwide within an instant. With the changes they are proposing, they would be able to decide for us what we are allowed to talk about and what truth really is. They are attempting to position themselves as the authority and in a place that cannot be criticized by those that they are meant to represent. They will shriek, Russia, Russia, Russia! But we all know this is BS. We all know that they don't care about foreign subversion. Just look at the influence that China has right now. Speaking of which, our next story will discuss an actual Chinese spy that was working for Dianne Feinstein. This is a story that is about two weeks old, and even Donald Trump tweeted about it. However, this wouldn't be enough to get the media to even cover this story in the slightest. It happened five years ago, but additional information is just surfacing about how the Bay Area Senator's office was infiltrated by a Chinese spy. The Bay Area is a hotbed for Russian and Chinese espionage. Late last year, the feds shut down the Russian consulate in San Francisco. You may remember thick black smoke that billowed from the building before Russian diplomats turned it over to authorities, presumably produced by burning documents. Now all eyes are on Chinese intelligence in the Bay Area after the website Politico reported last week that a staffer for Senator Feinstein turned out to be a Chinese spy who reported back to the government officials about local politics. Just imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. If this happened to a right-leaning person and the country was Russia, can you imagine the wall-to-wall, -wall, 24-7, probably year-long coverage that we would see on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, etc. On Wednesday, the San Francisco Chronicle uncovered additional details in a column written by reporters Phil Mattier and Andy Ross. The column revealed that the Chinese spy was Feinstein's driver, who also served as a gopher in her Bay Area office and was a liaison to the Asian American community. He even attended Chinese consulate functions for the senator. Feinstein, who was chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee at the time, was reportedly mortified when the FBI told her she had been infiltrated. Investigators reportedly concluded that the driver hadn't leaked anything of substance and Feinstein forced him to retire. Feinstein's office would not comment on the story, saying that they do not address personal matters or investigations, but they added that none of their California office staffers had ever had security clearance. The FBI declined to comment on the story. As much as we have heard about Russia day in and day out, the media seems to have no interest at all in this story. Even with Donald Trump tweeting about it, the media remained eerily silent, which is strange considering how much they said they cared about foreign influence. Selective outrage indeed. This story somehow has remained one of those things that only people who follow the news cycle religiously have caught on to. This is why these two articles that we talked about in this video were mostly just a narration of the articles. As these stories are not as well known, I feel compelled to provide a little bit more context so you know that I'm not just making things up. When the topic is a little bit more popular, exposition is not as necessary. My thoughts on this are somewhat straightforward. We know that China has been at the forefront of using espionage against the United States, obtaining billions worth of sensitive information through the internet that they hacked. I take this a little bit more seriously than the Russia narrative, but still, it seems that they nipped this one before it could get too bad. I mean, this is no Imran Awan case, which was completely swept under the rug. Other than this spy attending Chinese consulate functions on behalf of Feinstein, I don't think he was able to do much with the position he had obtained. However, it is still important to keep an eye out on this type of stuff, especially when it surrounds somebody like Diane Feinstein. Well, that'll be it for today's video. Thanks everybody for watching, and here it is, your moment of clarity. Then come to Antifa United, where you can get all of the hottest anti-fascist swag. You want stickers? We got that. You want banners? We got that. 
patches and pins. We got that too. Wanna gear up and join us in the streets? We have the best face masks and the coolest scenes that can instruct you on how to fight the alt-right. So remember kids, if you don't bash the fash, you are the fash. If I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, that, instead of the genocidal massacres because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good.